Hello, and welcome to Ecopia's Solace Scholar. My name is Zivra Matimela, and today I'd like to speak to you about soiling. Over the past eight years, Ecopia has cleaned nearly three billion solar panels without damaging a single one from India to the Middle East to California, Mexico, and Chile. Utilizing all that experience, we'd like to present to you our accumulated knowledge about soiling, combined with some selected independent studies to give you a quick review and an overview of the material of soiling, shading, and losses. When considering the losses, whether they be intermediate, second, or two through the entire year, affecting a single module all the way up to the entire plant, there are many factors combined. The weather, clouds, the amount of sun you have in that region, dust and wind affecting temperature and soiling, the construction of the site, the topography of the land itself, and even how you structure the lines to various strings. Today, we're going to focus on the region between days to seconds and only on the solar module itself. The four horsemen of solar losses have long been hailed as insulation versus humidity, as humidity drives inside the module causes damages to the electronics, ambient temperature reducing the effectiveness of semiconductors, the model performance itself as guaranteed by the production and manufacturers going through potential induced degradation, light induced degradation, light elevated temperature induced degradation, and fill factor. And last but not least is shading and soiling, reducing the amount of light hitting your panel and causing several other damages, which we'll go into momentarily. When you look at shading, you need to consider what exactly happens to your panel. Sure, it could be the cloud passing by, it could be trees, it could be poles within the vicinity, but sand, dust, accumulated dirt following through is the most common form of soiling on solar panels, reducing production, increasing temperature, and overall causing damage to the entire site. The effects of soiling and shading are prevailing throughout all the factors that affect the module performance, be it the temperature causing a caking in a blanket, reducing the amount of light hitting the semiconductors, and even causing hotspots, degrading and even ruining the panels over time. The picture you see beside me is just one month of soiling accumulation and the amount of dust reducing production by dozens of percents. Every and any object that might fall on your solar panel, reducing visibility of light and blocking photons from arriving in semiconductors is considered soiling. There are many types of soiling one needs to consider depending on where in the world someone is working. The most common thought of type is the sand, the dust, and the mineral particles that you would find in deserts and other arid locations where you would usually get the most amount of sun. You can also get bird droppings or algae when you're close to humidity and water. Pollen is often overlooked. But even if you look into the Netherlands and Germany, you will see that solar panels have reduced productivity for a few months every year just from the pollens of trees and flowers. Engines and exhaust, common pollution coming from cars and factories, will also create a, a type of barrier that forms across the solar panels. And last but not least is agricultural emissions. Anything that you mow down, vegetation or plants rising through the air, leftovers from livestock, all of these can rise and fall on solar panels near farms and other agricultural areas. Here you can see a selection of several dust types collected within a single region in India. You can see that not only do they come in different particle size, but in different colors. Each color blocking a different array of wavelengths, causing different production loss. The size of particles should not be overlooked as well, as it might allow more or less light to emit through it. As a general rule of thumb, the smaller the dust or the smaller the particles that land on your solar panel, the less light will be able to infiltrate between. While the large particles might reduce visibility by a few percent, the smaller ones and mineral composures might reduce your production by two or three dozen percents even for a single gram per square meter. Here you can see an example of soiling losses in the Egypt desert. The Egypt desert is categorized with large particles of sand, thus being the most easy part of dusting and soiling to deal with. Even here you can see that for a single gram per square meter, regardless of the angle in which your tracker or fixed tilt installation is, you'll get 5% of power loss from a single gram. Dust that accumulates daily might reach there within two, three, four days, depending on the region and a dust storm can easily deposit three grams per square meter in most regions of the world, far worse in the Middle East and North Africa. After the dust settles, wind going through the solar power plant causes dust to move across the surface, 
causing abrasions and scratches to the anti-reflective coating, to the glass surface of the panel, or any other chemical that might be on the panel itself. With the rise of humidity and its drying out, dust particles congeal, creating a cement-like layer that blocks light even more. And with the rising and falling over the water and drying back down, a caking is created in which layers of dust become more and more condensed, laying lower and lower across the panel, forming stronger bonds with the chemicals there, making sure that the forces required to clean that dust become stronger and stronger, and that's what required to cause more damage and abrasions to the panels themselves. Last but not least, even beyond the energy lost, hotspots might be created. When left unclean for a long period of time, the dust settles over specific cells, creating blocks of light only in a specific region within that panel. That creates a single cell with reduced production. That reduced production is very similar to resistivity, creating power losses and heat. That heat is the fabled hotspot, causing damage to the panel within that specific location and spreading through it to different cells and even to different panels, creating accumulated damage, aging your panels faster, and reducing the power production of the entire plant. Massive dust storms. While some regions have dust accumulating over days or even weeks before an actual production loss can be perceived, between two and three tons of dust leave Africa every year through dust storms, settling in regions from Spain throughout the Mediterranean all the way to Africa, and on occasions even all the way to Great Britain. That amount of dust causes damage on a whole different level. Not only does the entire site becomes paralyzed, production is lowered by dozens, sometimes 50% production loss just from the dust itself, and the amount of time to correct such an event might be substantial. By the time a team can be assembled, dispatch the solar site, and clean the entire plant so you may reach peak production again, days or even weeks might pass, causing reduced profitability, reduced power production, and a steep increase in costs, which were not planned up as this is an event-driven occasion instead of a predicted maintenance. A prediction of dust production, as was done by the UN, can show that throughout the Mediterranean, Africa, and the Middle East, the amount of dust is not only significant, but keep rising every year. This is caused by many factors, from climate change to deforestation, loosening the earth, making sure that more dust and sand follows with the winds and settles as the wind takes it around the world. So what can be done? The first idea is, of course, the panels must be clean. The cleaning will prevent the creation of hot spots, the reducing productivity. It will make sure that the panels are clean before the dust has time to cement or cake thus requiring less force and making sure that the panels are in peak production and do not age faster. The first line of defense would usually be the manual cleaning. When you think of the amount of dust, you will consider yourself will take someone to clean the dust itself using mops, brooms, or any other sort of cleaning apparatus that is deemed reasonable for that site. But one must consider manual cleaning costs. Taking Spain into consideration, the cost for a cleaning person for a single day can be a 210 euros. If we look into a power plant of 500 megawatts, the amount of time it will take to clean is over 1,800 man days. And at 210 euros per cleaning day per person, the cost is nearly 400,000 euros per a single cleaning cycle. Traditional cleaning, though, carries a few risks with it. Using a Personnel trained and semi-trained to go through the site might cause damage from cars, wrong parking, bumping into the infrastructure. The cleaning itself using brushes or mops will cause damage and scratch the panels, specifically affecting anti-reflective coating. You have the amount of water used is significant and can leave traces of minerals as it dries up across the panels and increase vegetation. The increased vegetation can in turn ruin the ground, causing damage to infrastructure, obstruct the movement range of trackers, and even cause shading in extreme cases. And even after all that, one must consider the risk of water and labor. Lately, water has become a tradable resource, meaning that its cost with time keeps rising and rising. Labor costs as well keep rising, so there is no visibility to the future of what a cleaning cycle might cost two years in the future, five, 15, or 25 years. To continue with the risks of traditional cleaning, we need to look a bit into the cleaning itself. An inconsistent level of cleaning, such as swiping using a brush or a broom, 
using people to do the same work over and over over days will decrease the, their performance and the quality of the work. Even taking semi-automated machines that try to go over the entire row in a single swipe would cause an inconsistent level of cleaning, creating wedges of sand and dust, which in turn will create hot spots, damaging the panels themselves. Following a dust storm, or even trying to create a cleaning cycle in advance, would require assembling a team of dozens of people, bringing them onto the site, and then starting to clean the entire plant. As you've seen for the 500 megawatt plant, you would need over 1,800 days, requiring assembling a team of over 100 personnel and then sending them on site for three weeks of cleaning. Throughout that time, from a single dust storm, you have a production re reduction of 35% and counting. Even after taking into consideration the damage done to the panels or to the site, insurance required, the length of the cleaning cycle, and the possible inconsistent level of cleaning, one needs to consider visibility. The rising costs of water, since it became a tradable resource, and the up and rising costs of labor will continue to rise as time goes by. So each running cycle will cost more and more, reducing visibility of profitability and the availability of the power plant. The easiest way to reduce the risks from traditional cleaning is to make do with traditional cleaning, switching to automated cleaning. An automated cleaning system gives you full availability, allowing you to clean the entire site within two hours of a dust storm, reaching peak performance within the same day and within the same cycle. It requires no water to operate on site, reducing costs and allowing you to reach remote locations with no need of logistical events or ready-made infrastructure. It reduces significantly the amount of man-made mistakes since no personnel are required to operate that equipment. The other benefit of using an automated cleaning machine is that it allows you to tap into new technology. Sensing the infrastructure and the site itself, giving you better visibility about the state of the site and the infrastructure, allowing you to have predictive maintenance for that site itself, reducing maintenance costs and improving the overall performance and increasing profits for the entire site. The combination of cleaning and sensing gives you an uplift of profit and in production year long with full visibility for years and years ahead, allowing you to project properly profits and costs throughout the project lifetime, allowing you to make the best and most informed decision about the profitability for every region, supplier, manufacturer, and project. Common questions one should ask before designing a power plant to increase both production and profitability is which types of model one is using, how to clean them, what is the potential for that specific location. For example, before you agree to a cleaning solution, verify with an independent lab that that cleaning solution does not damage your panels or anti-reflective coating. Verify that it has years of visibility into the damage into anti-reflective coating, panels, be it glass on glass. Verify that no damage will be done from that production. Make sure that the costs for the entire project are streamlined and visible to you without being subject to changes due to outside events, from water crisis to increase in labor, or possibly even strikes, which might occur at the most inconvenient of times. Let's do a specific case study to see about the profitability and the availability of dust, cleaning, and cleaning cycle. We'll take data from the Malaga University, reviewing the soiling losses for the solar plants in the area and see what is the best case and most profitable scenario available. We'll look at Andalusia in the south of Spain. The amount of dusting that will lead to power production loss is about 0.2% each day. But during summer, those accumulate into much higher percentages, reaching 20% power loss in those critical months. Wind and rain events might clean some of the dust, but even they occur haphazardly and not throughout the entire year. Bear with me as we dive a bit deeper into the math of the equations and seeing how we can reach a calculation of how often you should clean depending on the region where you're located, the cost of cleaning in that part, and what are the added benefits for each side. We'll take the data as presented for Spain and we'll look at this very simple equation. The profit is the net cash inflow minus the costs. The costs are comprised of fixed o &M various maintenance costs and the cost for cleaning, which is comprised from the number of cleaning and the cost per cleaning cycle. The cash inflow can be looked at as the rate one receives for each kilowatt of power times the amount of power that the power plant produces. There is, of course, peak production. A 500 megawatt power plant will produce 500 megawatt on the peak condition. 
a thousand GHI usually, as proclaimed by the modern manufacturers. Throughout the day, one must consider how many hours of production and how much sun reaches the area, which of course varies with the weather, the season, the location, shading, and other factors. So the more dust you have, the less production you, you get. The more often you clean, the less profits you have from the costs of cleaning. Let's look into the optimal point of both of these. We'll be using a simplified version where we're going through the entire production over a year and averaging it for a day by day so we can sporadically do the cleaning cycles over each amount of time. We will also discount any event of dust storm, looking only into the regular dust flow for the region as calculated. Let's look a bit into the numbers for our case study in the south of Spain, putting them into the bottom line equations and seeing how often one should clean and what the profitability will be. For a 500 megawatt plant throughout the year, it would average by 2.5 million kilowatt per hour, with just about five hours of accumulated max production. The rate one can get according to latest publications is about 1 40th of a euro. The alpha for the soiling loss, as we've seen, is 0.2%. And the amount it will take to clean the entire site is over 380,000 euros per cleaning cycle. When you look at this averaged case, you see a loss of 16% in production throughout the year. This doesn't take into account this magical cleaning that happens overnight and reduces the amount of dust storms into zero. If you look into those two factors as well, you realize the situation is even far worse than that. Increasing the number of cleanings will of course increase the production level, but on the other side, it will reduce profitability as the cost of cleaning is so significant that the bottom line will go down with the number of cleaning. The solution can lie in reducing the cost of cleaning. Using an automated product, such as a copia, for example, allows you to clean daily, reducing the cost per cleaning to basically zero, giving you peak production throughout the year without the added cost of water, a labor, as it uses none, and giving you full visibility as the prices are fixed for the next 25 years. The Ecopia robots are controlled from the cloud and the server and not from people on site itself, and also collect data about the infrastructure itself, giving you better visibility about your infrastructure status, allowing you to plan better maintenance and reduce the costs of O&M. Combining both cleaning and data with either your SCADA or your personnel to increase production and make sure that the sun shine brighter.